Hello, welcome to this third video in this set of videos on triple integrals. The first two videos were about Cartesian, just X, Y, Z. Now we're going to switch coordinate systems and this video is going to be introducing cylindrical coordinate systems and we'll do a triple integral example um, before in the next video we'll do a couple more. So what is cylindrical coordinate system? Honestly, it is the X, Y plane done in polar while the z which is the distance off the xy plane that's just going to be the exact same z that it was in cartesian so when it comes to labeling the points they'll be labeled instead of xyz just r theta z all right it's called cylindrical coordinates and the points are labeled r theta z r stands for the radial distance outward from the origin in the xy plane so that's the dashed line there in the xy plane. Theta is the angle that you spin or you swing away from the positive x-axis in a counterclockwise manner. That's the positive theta. And then finally, z is that same distance, the vertical distance off the xy plane. The connecting equations between polar and Cartesian will be used for the xy plane. The fact that r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. The fact that theta is the arctan of y over x. And then backwards, the fact that x is r cosine theta and y is r sine theta. So when it comes to z, it's just going to be the, the original z. All right, so honestly, it's just the xy plane done in polar. And z is the same distance off the xy plane. So our triple integrals will be in terms of r, theta, and z. And the element of area that we calculated called the Jacobian, to do double integrals in polar, that r will still persist. Um, we could do it from the Jacobian again. Or uh, here's a more visual way. What we're doing is taking an element of area and trying to find uh, it's like a cube okay and so what this is is a a, a cube for cylindrical we have uh, the distance um, of the volume of a of the of a piece of the cube will be the length times width times height um, the the length of one piece will be just um, just dz that's the height the height of it is dz, and then there's dr, and then there's d theta. But um, the uh, the piece that's the uh, the bent piece along the arc of the circle that's measured by r times d theta. We have dr is one dimension, dz is another dimension, and then the the curvy dimension there is a piece of sector, and that's multiplied radius times uh, theta, and so that's r d theta. So r dr d theta dz. It's a product of three dimensions to give you the volume of the little cuboid. Um, that's another way to see that, the fact that the R is in there. When it comes to the ordering on how you do, uh, who you do first, it's no mystery like it was in Cartesian. Okay, Z will be first, R will be second, and then lastly, there'll be theta. Okay, now when do you know to use cylindrical as opposed to Cartesian? Well, whenever you have a region, a three-dimensional region that you're integrating over that has an upper and lower defined z value that, you, that doesn't change throughout the shape. Like, you know, when you do z first, you draw in the, the slice and you put the circles there. As you move that thing around, if that doesn't change, the upper doesn't change and the lower doesn't change, on top of when you project onto the xy plane, that's what you do after doing z first, you project onto the xy plane, then... <clears throat> the xy plane region is some kind of circular shape, a sector of a circle, a quarter of a circle, a half of a circle, a full circle, or maybe some polar curve. And then you would want to then, of course, get away from x and y and do that in terms of r and theta. So we will use cylindrical if the region of the xy plane is circular in nature and there's an upper and lower defined z as you move throughout your shape. Let's see our first example of cylindrical coordinate triple integral. So this is some four-dimensional volume. Okay, we can't 
we can't picture it, but we can picture the three-dimensional sh shape in which we are integrating over. We started out integrating over a, a integral in the x-axis. That was a single variable integral back in Calc 1. And then for double integrals, we were integrating over some region in the xy plane. For triple integrals, we're integrating over a 3D shape. The name of our 3D shape in this particular problem, capital E, and it's defined the following way. The solid that's in the first octant that lies beneath the paraboloid. That's a word. I like to replace paraboloid with bowl. It's a bowl. It opens downward because of the way the minuses are in front of the squared terms. It reaches a maximum of 1 when x and y are both 0. And then when you have z equals 0, by the time you get down to the xy plane, then you'll have actually the unit circle. So this shape confined to the first octant has two of its parts being the coordinate planes, the xz and the yz plane. The bottom part is the xy plane, and then there's the the uh, curved part of the surface, which comes from the equation z equals 1 minus x squared minus y squared. So that's our region E. We want to do this in cylindrical. Why? There's an upper and lower defined z value. So we'd want to do z first for sure. But when we project down to the xy plane, we have a quarter of, a, of the unit circle, actually. We'll find out that it's the unit circle. So for sure, since the region in the xy plane is circular and there's an upper and lower z value, we will use cylindrical coordinate system. This equation needs to be converted. z equals 1 minus x squared minus y squared can't be that anymore. We have to convert it. We have ways of converting xy into r theta. If you factor out the negative, it's really x squared plus y squared, who is r squared. So z bounds are 0 to 1 minus r squared. What about r's bounds and theta's bounds? From that, you have to go to the xy plane. You radiate outward from the origin. So you start at r equals 0 and you're done at r equals something. We don't know, but it's from setting z equals 0. It's in the xy planes. In that equation, if you set z equal to 0, you'll have exactly the unit circle x squared plus y squared equals to 1. And that's in terms of polar, that's r equals 1. Okay, good. What about theta? Theta starts at 0. And it's going to end what you think at pi over 2. We have all of our bounds. Now we have to look at the integrand. It's not just a 1. We're not trying to find volume of this shape. Okay, we're trying to find some 4-dimensional volume under some 3-dimensional shape. So we uh, have to convert x cubed can't have x's and y's anymore. We have to convert xy squared using the polar conversions. The fact that x is r cosine theta and y is r sine theta. So we have r cubed cosine cubed to replace x cubed. r cosine theta and r squared sine squared, put those together, we get r cubed cosine sine squared. That is our new integrand. But watch, something nice happens with that. We probably could have done it in terms of x and y, and done, but let's see it in terms of r and theta here. When we, when we do, hopefully you'll see, you can factor out the r cubed, but they also both have a cosine. You can factor that out too. And your friend, cosine squared plus sine squared shows its pretty face. <laughs> so that's going to give you a 1. Your integrand simplified. x cubed xy squared becomes r cubed cosine theta. But don't forget, there's a hidden factor of r that comes in as well to that integrand from r d r d theta. So we put that r with the other r. All together, we're talking about r to the fourth. We're integrating out z first. No arguing about the order. z is going to be first. So I don't see any z's in the integrand. So we'll just get a z. We'll put in a 1 minus r squared. Put in a 0. So we just have 1 minus r squared. Um, it became r to the fourth because it was r cubed, and then the r dr d theta part gave us r to the fourth. And now that's going to be multiplied by the quantity of 1 minus r squared from the z integration. It's just r to the fourth minus r to the sixth. This integrand is separable, and the bounds are all numerical. We could actually do this as two separate Calc 1 integrals and multiply the results. 
r to the fifth over five minus r to the seventh over seven. Antiderivative of cosine theta, sine theta. Put in the bounds of fifth minus a seventh, and then multiply by the sine of pi over two, because the zeros give you zero for both of these. And that's two thirty fifths. All right, so that was your first example of a triple integral in cylindrical. And so remember when you go to it, upper and lower z definitely defined, never changed, and the xy region is circular in nature. Thank you for watching. My name is Nikai Rimmer, trying to help you through this multivariable calculus journey. Uh, please uh, head to my webpage if you need any help with extra resources. Um, I have workbooks and notes and and you can find anything you would want there, hopefully, to help you through this. Please like and subscribe. Comment down below. Reach out to me if you, need any, um, if you have any questions. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.